Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel. And it also helps us reach others who want to test their math skills with these types of test questions. And this will be our 29th part in this series. And what we have going on with this one is that we have to determine the area of the green region for the semicircle. And we are told that A to C is the diameter of our semicircle across here. We're also told that A to B is four centimeters, B to C is 10 centimeters, and B to D is eight centimeters. So what we're gonna to have to find here is we're gonna to have to find our overall area of our semicircle, which is not gonna be difficult since we already know the diameter. And we're going to have to subtract out our area in white for our triangles here, which is will be our hardest part because we have to get dimensions for the white triangle. So if we can get the overall dimension from A to D and then D to C, this will make this so much simpler because we can use Thales theorem. Thales theorem states if all interior angles of a triangle are inscribed angles and if one side of the triangle is the diameter of a circle thus the angle opposite to the diameter is a right angle so what that means is that we have to have a triangle that is inscribed inside of our circle meaning all edges touch the edge of the circle which a d and c do for our larger overall triangle we have to have one side being the diameter which a to c is the diameter so that means that the side that is opposite the diameter, which is angle D up here, is 90 degrees. So all we have to do is find A to D and D to C, and that would be our base and our height for this overall white triangle. So let's start working on getting those values. So what I'm going to do first is I am going to draw a line from point D, and we're gonna to go to the center of our semicircle here, and let's just call that point O for right now. So we're gonna split this up into even more triangles. So O to C will just be seven centimeters, simply because our diameter is 14. And then this will be three centimeters here. And since our radius is going to be seven centimeters and D is on the edge of the circle here, that means that this line right here is also seven centimeters. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to try to find this angle right here for this internal triangle that I just made of D, B, and O, and I'm gonna call this angle X. And the reason why I can do this is because this angle X for this D, B, O triangle, the small one, will be exactly the same angle for B for the larger triangle of D, B, C. And then I can use that to get my overall side of D, C. Alrighty. So how are we going to do that? Well, we are going to use the law of cosines here. And we're going to use the law of cosines a lot here. And just let me preface this by saying this. This procedure that I'm showing here is not necessarily the only procedure that you can use to find this answer. It is just one procedure that you can follow. So using the law of cosines to get my angle x, I'm going to have my side that is opposite my angle, which is the 7 centimeters squared, is equal to the other two squared and added together. So 8 squared plus 3 squared minus off those two sides times two. So two times eight times three, and then multiplied by the cosine of my angle, which I'm just calling X for right now. So if we rearrange this, X would just be equal to the cosine inverse of seven squared minus off eight squared minus off three squared, all divided by a minus two times eight times three, and this gives me an angle of exactly 60 degrees. So my angle of X is 60 degrees here. Alrighty, so I'm gonna use this in conjunction with the larger triangle of BDC now. So let me scroll down just a bit here. So here is my angle of 60 degrees and I'm looking for DC on this edge here. Well, I know that this side is eight centimeters, this is 10 centimeters, and I know an internal angle that is opposite the side that I do not know. So once again, I'm going to use the law of cosines with my triangle on the right there. So this will be for triangle D, B, and C, and I'm looking for side DC, so DC squared will be equal to eight squared plus 10 squared minus off two times eight times 10 for those two sides, and then cosine of the angle that is opposite the side I'm finding, which is 60 degrees. 
So when you solve this out, DC is equal to the square root of 84, which is two square roots of 21 centimeters. So this right here is two square roots of 21 centimeters in length. Alrighty, so there's two paths that you can use to get to AD. Well, since we know this is a right triangle right here, we could just use the Pythagorean theorem if we want to to find AD or keeping with the law of cosines, just getting some practice with that one. What you can do is that you can find that this angle is 120 degrees over here. And then you can use the law of cosines once again to get AD, just keeping with that methodology. Let's just try that one. So AD squared would be equal to eight squared plus four squared minus off two times eight times four times the cosine of 120 degrees. And then AD would be the square root of 112, which gives you four square roots of seven centimeters. Once again, you could have used the Pythagorean theorem to find that. So now that I have my overall sides here, which this is four square roots of seven centimeters, I can just find the overall area of my white triangle just using one half uh, base times height using the two sides that I just found because this is a right triangle. So area in white would just be one half times my base, and let's just call that two square roots of 21 centimeters times my height, and we'll just call that one the four, seven, or four times the seven, or four times the square root of seven centimeters. And this gives me a total of 28 times the square root of three centimeters squared for my area in white. So all I need now is the area of my semicircle, which is pretty quick to find because we were given the diameter at the start. So area of my semicircle would just be pi times my radius squared over two. So this would just be pi times seven centimeters squared over two. And this gives me 49 times pi over two centimeters squared. So the area in green would just be this overall area of my semicircle and subtracting out the area in white. So area in green, would just be 49 pi over two centimeters squared, subtracting off 28 square roots of three centimeters squared. And it does not come out to be a nice number, so let's round it off. And we get 28.472 centimeters squared as our area in green. And that's how you would work that particular problem. And as I said at the start of the problem, the, the procedure that is shown here is not necessarily the only one. It's not necessarily the fastest, the slowest, the longest, anything like that. It is just one procedure that you could take to find the overall area. Just like what I said up here, that AD, you could have used the Pythagorean theorem to find if you wanted to. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned a new math skill along the way. And if you want to test your abilities even further, please check out the other videos on our channel as this is the 29th part in this particular series. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below and subscribe to the channel because all of that really does help us out. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.